Hey everybody, it's Wilbits. We're playing Ace Attorney Apollo Justice, and we're gonna start episode four, Turnabout Succession. And that is the whole truth of this case. We beat it! Congratulations! Game over! We win! Mason! Whoa. This is intense. That computer's dying! Or its heart rate is increasing. It's getting excited. No, they just shot someone in a hospital bed. In order to understand it myself, I had to know the story of these last seven long years. I'm assuming it's a weird computer. I'm probably really, really wrong. Cards. We're getting a throwback. Nothing happens by chance. All is connected. This is like uh, Ultron talking to Jarvis. <laughs> it's my Nintendo Zapper! Batman! No, these are magicians. Oh. And now, you stand ready to begin the final chapter of this story. Someone dying on the stand? That seems intense. Will the defendant be found guilty or innocent? The decision is yours. Oh, it's Clavier! Or not Clavier. The other Gavin. Klaus? I should have been doing a German accent the whole time, I guess. Alright, write anything agency. Hey Apollo, look on TV. Look, look, look at television. It's amazing the pictures are moving. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of busy not watching TV. Well, look at that. He's the last memory, all right. Amazing. Apollo, you should be watching this. Ow, 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 what? Stop grabbing my ear. Ah! I was writing about our last case in my live journal, a website that everyone still uses. Lawyers are supposed to write things in records, Apollo, not journals. And why now? That case was three months ago. Whoa, three months have passed. Huh. Hey, it's a long story. I did a lot, you know? I want to vacuum pack the feel of this moment for later. Right now, I'm wowing the crowd by figuring out how Lamarwad disappeared. That's right, Uncle Vlad did that illusion too. But you're missing him on the TV right now! Ugh. I was just getting to the good part. I suppose I should watch a little TV with her, if it'll get her to just calm down. After all, her father's expecting me to look after her while he's away. What you're seeing now is a rehearsal for the greatest magic show on Earth! Happening right here in our very own Sunshine Coliseum! The Sunshine Coliseum? Hey, that's where the Gaviner's concert was. Only three more days until miracles happen right here before your unbelieving eyes. The legendary Troop Grammary is performing for the first time in seven years. That's going to be great. I'm so there. You and Daddy are coming too. The legendary Grammaries. If Trucy's real father were still alive, he'd be on that stage performing miracles. Illusions. They're called illusions, all right? They're not really miraculous. They just seem that way. I've got the tickets and everything. Here's yours, Apollo. I'm going to give it to you now. Just hold on to it for the next several days. Don't put it anywhere. Magic show ticket. Oh, in the court record. Hmm. 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 Ah, you are here. Working hard or hardly working? Okay, it's Phoenix. <laughs> hey, how you been? Hi there, stranger. Not exactly the kind of greeting I'd want to hear from my own kid. Although, he has been gone a long time. He went out to get scratch tickets and never came back. <laughs> How goes it, Trucy? Here, I got a present for you. Yay, pudding! I love pudding! Ooh, it's bomb fresh! Okay. Straight from the cow! 
<laughs> just pudding just comes right out. And not just one pudding, but three whole cups? I'll have to pace myself. Rum, 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 rum. Well, I'm beat. That's right, Daddy. You're on a top secret mission. You've got to take it easy with the secrets, you know. <laughs> How right you are. So, you, you still can't tell us what your mission is? Maybe it is time. It has something to do with you, anyway. Huh? With me? Ooh, maybe you're getting a top secret mission, too. Maybe you can be one of those guys. A spy, a spy guy. Can I just be a defense attorney? The thing that I have a, uh, a degree in and, like, a certification, whatever. I have a law degree, yeah. <laughs> to be honest, telling you about the mission was my whole reason for coming here today. What? Tell me. You've heard of the jurist system, yes? The jurist system? That's right. The new legal system everyone's talking about. We just invented them. They're called juries. They're going to be huge, huge, kid. Juries. Have you heard of Apollo? Huh? Uh, maybe? I mean, we're in America, and we don't use a jury system, so the jury system is used in other countries. Maybe not as many people are talking about it as I thought. Maybe I'm just hanging out in jurist bars. The jurist system, huh? Huh. Let's talk about these jurists. So, Daddy, what's this jurist system thing? Well, Trusy, do you know what a jury is? I've heard of it. But no. Isn't that those people who sit in court in those old courtroom dramas? Like you? Don't you get to decide if a guy's innocent or guilty? Do you know Apollo? Only from TV. It's 12 people chosen from the community, right? Well, they're thinking about reviving that system. They're calling the new system the Jurist System. It's brand new. You've never heard of it. We're going to explain it to you. No more doing whatever you like, Your Honor. Not quite that harsh. The jurists cooperate with the judge. They help analyze the case from different angles. Ah, and there'll only be six of them under the current proposal, right? Lazy. Well, you know your stuff, Apollo. Their findings directly affect the verdict. Hopefully people will start taking the courts a little more seriously now. I feel like I'm on some kind of educational TV show, like some kind of tutorial in a video game or something. Weird. Starring Dr. Wright. <laughs> Dr. Wright, his assistant, his lovely assistant, Trucy, and Mascot Apollo, the perfect team, Mascot Apollo, who does nothing. Mascot, hey! All right. Are, are we going to have that in this next case, or are they just making small chalk talk? I don't know. So what's this secret mission? The jurist system is my mission, more or less. Anyway, keep in mind that new ideas like the system are always risky, Apollo. Too true, too true. Everyone's got an opinion, and they just talk and talk, and nothing is decided. Kind of like you, Apollo. I'm not that bad, am I? In any case, we're gonna give it a shot. A test, if you will. I don't like tests. We'll take a case as a sample, and choose six jurists. I'll be the one helping with that process, incidentally. Why? How? You don't... You've been disbarred from practicing law. Why do you get to help? Well, for one, I'll be chair of the Jurist System Simulated Court Committee. A thing that I just made up. Are you just going crazy? The chair constructs the ideal situation, choosing the case, the jurist candidates. Even the judge in the courtroom. Wow, it's like you have a real job. I was never that good at the piano, to be honest. Once a lawyer, always a lawyer, I guess. The trial's tomorrow, by the way. Don't miss it! The trial simulation, that is. A simulation, huh? Sounds interesting. So, what kind of case is the trial simulation about? Well, since it's the first run-through of a new system, I wanted something simple. Good thinking. No sense wearing yourself out on something too serious. True. The case is a murder. That's not simple at all! By simple, did you mean the defendant is... Guilty, yes. Most likely. So, good luck, Apollo. Uh, with what?
With what? What now? What am I? What am I? Huh? With the trial tomorrow. You're defending, of course. Recall that I said it had something to do with you. Go for it, Apollo. It's just a test case, anyway. No sweat. Yeah, but there's still a verdict to be decided. And a potentially serious sentence. The most serious in a worst case scenario. Uh, you mean the verdict's for real? That's not a test trial. That's a that's a real trial with a test system. All the forms have been filed. There's no turning back now. You're doing a whole new system now. The trial begins tomorrow at 10 a.m. Hope you make room in your schedule. <laughs> Why am I only hearing about this now? Ah, yeah. Uh, there was a change this morning. I picked a new case. Eh? Something that happened last night. What? Let's ask you about all the things. We'll just go down in order. Hey, Apollo, I know you're all excited about that secret mission. But what about this? The Troop Grammary Grand Magic Show? Huh? Oh, right. The card tricks. They're not card tricks! I mean, some of them are card tricks, but there are other kinds of tricks, too. The grand illusions, miracles, the apocalypse, the earth will shatter. So, what, that's three whole days from now. It's at Sunshine Coliseum. Let's go, let's go today. We're going to camp out. I've got a, I've got a tent, I've got some marshmallows, and we're going to eat those for three days. We can say hi to Uncle Volant. Have fun. I'm not going. I'm a grump. What? I can't go by myself. Right. Oh, I missed. I missed a line there. Why not go with her? But what about the secret mission? No, don't worry about that. You'll hear all about it tomorrow, regardless. I don't trust that smile. He knows something that he's not telling me. Yippee! Now you can take me to the Coliseum. <sighs> I suppose it wouldn't kill me to pop over there. Uh... Ah, Grammary! Oh, that, that reminds me something. Hmm, um... What's this, Daddy? Isn't that silk hat the Grammary seal? Consider it a birthday present, Trissy. Thanks, it's great! What is it? But... Today isn't my birthday. Huh. Good point, good point. Well, I'll just take that back then, tear it up, throw it away. What day is it today, Apollo? Uh, today? Um, I think it's Recycle Your Plastics Day. Then it's a Recycle Your Plastics present! You may recycle this if it's made of plastic, and if don't, then don't. Yippee! So it's plastic! I've given up trying to understand them. It's much easier that way. This family is crazy. So, what is it? Can I open it, Daddy? No. Huh? You'll need that envelope someday. Someday soon. Don't open it until then. Well, why didn't you just hold on to it until then? Because that would be the logical thing to do, and the, this man's crazy. All right, Grammary envelope obtained. Hmm. An envelope about the Grammaries, huh? Huh. Okay. Trial simulation. That's important. All right, so what case are you going to use? You really want to know, don't you? Of course I do. I mean, if I'm going to be defending, then... D I, uh, yeah! If all goes well, then yeah. Of course, this is just a test. We wanted everyone to start without preconceptions. A blank slate, as it were. There's a difference between having a blank slate and just being totally clueless. Whose dumb idea was that anyway? Well, mine. Committee chair, remember? Oh. Well, if you want to know that badly, I suppose... I could give you permission to examine the scene of the crime. Good! That's better! But you can't talk to anyone involved with the case. What? Then how am I supposed to defend? You let me worry about the details there. Remember, I'm in charge of this trial. All of it. Yep, I'm the one who killed the person. I'm going to be the judge. I'm going to put on a fake beard, and I'm going to be doing like a crazy ho 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 voice. Ho ho ho. But you don't want it to backfire, do you? Apollo, if I'm in charge of this whole trial, that means the entire affair is my responsibility, for good or for bad. 
Just do what you can. And don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Uh, all right. I'd recommend going down to the detention center. Your client's waiting for you. You can ask about the scene there. I always said I wasn't supposed to talk to anybody involved. And if I go down to the detention center, then I'm talking to somebody who's involved. Unless I can't talk to them. Are they mute? You said I couldn't talk to anyone involved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Apollo. Oh, you can talk to your client. If you can get her to talk. Well, time's a-wasting. All right, let's find out what's going on in the detention center. So we're going to move to... Oh, yeah. We could go to the Coliseum, but let's go here first and just see who our client is and why they won't talk to us. Eh? Hmm? That's 20 minutes we've been waiting here. 20 minutes! That's like an entire video! Maybe I should complain? I'm sure that guard has better things to do than stand there pretending he doesn't see us. You know the minute we get angry, the client will show. It always works that way. That's why I've been mad the whole time. Except it didn't work. That's my secret. I'm always angry. Like shouting, oh waiter, and then they're standing right behind you. Oh god! Is our client going to be much longer? What are you talking about? Haven't you already started the meeting yet? Huh? Is our client a ghost? <laughs> hmm. Eek! Where'd you come from? Well, well anyway, pl please have a seat. This is hard to do, because I'm mirrored. <gasps> Acted surprised because her name was a surprise. <gasps> we just don't know her name yet. I have to think. I have to think of what, how this shy gamer diva is going to sound. I'm nervous, Apollo. It's the silence. It builds suspense. Why don't, why don't you do something, Chusey? You're a magician, aren't you? Do you have, like, a smoke pellet? Or, like, can you, like, shoot lighter fluid out of your sleeve at somebody? That's right. Okay. Just got this one trick, and I'm going to keep doing it. I'm the amazing Mrs. Hack! She passed out. You killed her, Trucy. Trucy, she's dead. Hmm, this magic underwear might have been a better bet. That's magic panties, Apollo. You're not going to dodge the guilt, the dirty reference that easily. It's an important part of the act. Puts people off ease. Makes it easy to fool them. Okay. We're going to try to talk. Introduc I bet she doesn't say anything to any of these. Um, uh, hi. Well, I'm your defense. I really think it has to be fate, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, and by fate, I mean destiny. Do you know I'm good with astrology? Yeah, yeah. Tell me, what's your sign? Yeah, okay. I can tell you mine if you'd like, Apollo. No, never mind. I just got carried away there. I seem destined to get difficult client, it seems. What's your name? Uh, so, what's your name? Ah, right. I'm supposed to introduce myself first. <laughs> My mistake, are you? I'm Apollo. Apollo Justice, and I'm fine. How are you? And I'm Juicy Wright. I know. I know, Trucy. Alright. This is getting nowhere fast. Hey, I know. <laughs> Maybe you can tell us what happened. I I'm your defense attorney, after all. You're right in the case that you're in. You're in jail right now. And I'm here to talk to you about what happened that got you in jail so I can help get you out. Anything out of the ordinary happened lately? You seen any good movies? 
Well, the other day, this tourist from out of town stopped me to ask directions. Late. Later, Trucy. I don't care about your tourist story. I feel like I need to ask directions myself here. Well, that was fruitless. Though I think I understand the concept of despair a little better now. You're good, Apollo. Is that a, is that a, is that a glove? <laughs> Look, she's doing her nails. What? Are nails more important than defense? Is that it? Let's go, Trucy. Let's go. I'm sick of her. Excuse me. Could you, could you read this? Uh, sure. I feel like a teenager on a first date. And this is the love letter we passed from desk to desk at school. Stop looking so wistful and read it, Paolo. It, it's a business card with a name and address. It says, you are hot like fire. No. <laughs> Wrap my heart in wire. The name is Vera Misham? Oh, I hit the card record accidentally. The address is for Drew Studio. Where's card added to the court record? Okay, is that her name? And you're giving me this card because... Well, looks like we're finished here. She left. She kinda talked to me. I think her name is Vera. I wonder if Drew Studio is the scene of the crime. Let's go find out. All right. Ah, let's just go straight to Drew Studio. What could go wrong? Ah, painting. Wow, this looks like a, looks like a studio. Owned by someone named Drew, maybe. It's like life imitating art, or maybe it's the other way around. Huh? But the tape on the ground there, it's a bit jarring. Yeah, looks like we found our crime scene. Apollo, look at all those paintings. Hey, don't touch those. It's okay, I'm just looking with my hands. Oops, silhouette. Oops, that one's ruined. Oop, knock that one over. Oop, put a big hole in it. Oh, we like the abstract, do we? And we have kind of an underwater thing, and then looks like sort of a impressionist thing except it's a little smeared at the top like up here it looks a little messed up huh Apollo look at this one looks half finished you can still see the rough sketch underneath but that's odd the rough part doesn't look like the rest of the painting at all there's another painting underneath it yeah good point that is odd Drew Misham's Drew Misham. Drew, Drew. What's the joke here? There's a joke in that name and I'm not getting it. His paintings are in the court record, regardless. All the paintings have a really different style, too. I thought I might find you two here. Oh. In a long time no see. Oh, seems like I run into you too far too often. Oh, but I know why you're here, too. You know about the trial simulation tomorrow? I've heard about it, sure. So Mr. Wright chose you, huh? We don't even know what the case is about. Well, he was killed. The artist owns the studio, that is. Mr. Drew Misham. Hmm, hmm. Misham. And his daughter was put under arrest. Yeah, we just saw her at the detention center. It was funny, though. She seemed more like a victim than the kind of person who could commit murder. You don't say... Not even by poisoning. That's how it was done, you know. Poisoning's a common way to get the job done when the murderer's a woman. But poisoning? Anyway, Mr. Wright told me you'd be coming. Feel free to take a look around. I'll just be over here with my snackies. We can't talk to anyone related to this case, the case this time around. Which means we'd better find out as much as we can here at the scene. Or else. 
So can we not? What happens if we try to talk to Emma? Can we talk to her? Or is she just going to snacku her way around? So, Miss, um, Drew Misha was some kind of artist? Apparently, did a lot of illustrations for books, I hear. Had a lot of female fans, too, for what it's worth. Just crazy screaming fans. Art! Art! We love your art! Ew! Give us kisses! Uh, something like that. Oh, well, I guess this stuff is kind of pretty. Like that oil painting over there, for instance. Um, yeah. That wasn't one of his illustrations, actually. Huh? So is this a standalone painting or something? Is that, is that what she means? He was an odd bird, Misham. Hadn't shown his face to anyone until the end. What do you mean, to anyone? He was always locked up here in the studio, apparently. His only connection to the outside world was through letters he'd put in that letterbox there. So how do we know it's really him and not somebody else who died? What if he had a patsy and he's faked his death so he can stop making illustrations? Letters? Do people still write letters? Ugh. What do you mean, Apollo? I mean, when was the last time you wrote a real letter? We use the emails now. Don't we use email and stuff these days? Now, Mr. Misham couldn't stand technology, it seemed. He was one of those Amish types. He did everything by mail. Maybe he thought that way was more artistic, you know? Letterbox. Ah. In any case, the only one person besides him allowed in here was his daughter, Vera. Oh, you mean the killer? The suspect, please. Let's not... Let's give her a chance. He took some fingerprints, of course. The only ones found in the room were Mr. Misham's and Vera's, basically. Basically? Actually, last night, Mr. Misham gave an interview to a reporter for the first time. It happened during the interview, apparently. The first interview ever? <clears throat> Could you tell us a bit more about what happened the night of the murder? So much for not talking to anybody involved in the case. So this woman, Vera, she's Mr. Misham's daughter, right? <clears throat> Yep, a real sickly girl ever since she was little. Hardly ever went outside. She did kind of give off a withdrawn sort of aura. The way she kept going over and inside. She was homeschooled by her father, apparently. And it was quite a scene when they took her to the detention center. She was screaming about how she'd die if they took her outside. That does sound like a scene. Was he, um, being mean to her? In the end, she agreed to leave if she was allowed her good luck charm for company. Her good luck charm? Apparently, she has this charm that magically gives her the courage to go outside. It's just a, it's just a, uh, it's a big, a big medal. A diploma? A medal. It's a medal that says courage. It's like a Wizard of Oz medal. I'm trying to remember which one the lion had. It's a medal. Why can't I ever get a normal client? No client's ever normal. They're always weird. What does that say about me? Why would a shut-in daughter kill her own dad? Don't look at me. So about the poison. It was found to be in his coffee, right? No, not precisely. Not precisely? What does that mean? It means see for yourself, I think. I was wondering, actually, if he... Because I've known some painters who wash their brushes in a coffee cup, and they have a different coffee cup that contains actual coffee, and they have to, like, have a paint-not-paint paint label on their mug so they don't accidentally... <laughs> the wrong thing everywhere. Other people, not me, I would never accidentally drink paint. I don't know what you guys are accusing me of. Like I said... Last night was the first time someone from the outside came into the studio. I guess mysterious painters who never go outside make for good articles. And it just so happened that he died the night of his first interview? Suspicious. <laughs> this guy, his hair, he's got kind of a like, almost Bob Ross. It's like a half Bob Ross, where it's like, on one side. At around 9 o'clock p.m. every night, Vera always made him a cup of coffee. Last night he drank his usual coffee and suddenly became violently ill. And died? 
She poisoned him on the night of his interview? Wouldn't the reporter see? He wasn't near Mr. Misham when she brought her father his coffee. He was checking out some equipment in the back of the room. Supposedly, that's why she didn't notice he was there. It was the reporter who called the police, in fact. Wait, but why is she the suspect? If anyone is suspicious, it's the reporter. Yet the reporter never got near Mr. Misham's coffee. Even Vera acknowledges that. Regardless, I want to know more about this reporter. 